you. So we can all see images in our minds. I want you to have a think about the most unusual image that comes to you in the clouds. You may know Sir Ken Robinson. He said that our imagination is the unique human capacity to bring into our minds things that aren't present and to be able to hypothesize about what might be. You might know this tree. Our imagination frees our mind. It frees our mind to think differently, to play with possibilities. We daydream and we let our minds wander. These processes must not be undervalued, especially in our education system. Some of the best ideas come from the most unexpected moments. Imagine the abbey filled with a thousand butterflies. There's a nod to that over there from Anthony Head's work. Imagination is everywhere. Imagination invites potential and possibility. It's about where we might be able to go and how we might be able to get there in every present situation. It, it helps us explore the liminal space between ideas and materials to make meaning. I believe that everybody is born with creative potential. I wouldn't do my job if I didn't believe that. Children's imagination is powerful. It's everywhere. They inhabit their imagination. Children have an innate capacity to be curious. They're driven to learn. They're explorers. They're creative knowledge builders. They don't stop imagining, thinking, feeling, learning through all their senses, inside and outside school, at home, in the light and in the dark. And sometimes it's scary, but they need their imagination. They need those worlds to live in. As adults, we can invite children to have the freedom to follow their fascinations, to explore environments of inquiry, and children ask amazing questions. Can we bring the outside inside? How big does a map have to be to be inside it? I'm sure that was a story from Borges about a cartographer who made a map the size of the world. But actually, our education system is closing these ideas down, and it's urgent. We are faced with an education system that's led by a performance-led agenda, and children should not be closed down by numbers. They shouldn't be defined by their grades. They're more than a school. So I think it's really important that we think about doing things differently. The arts particularly allow us to explore different versions of ourselves. They invite children to engage with open-ended and multimodal activities in a hundred languages, expressing their ideas. They, children sing and act and play and draw and dance. They move between these modalities so easily. It's natural to them. Imagine a world where children are allowed to be involved in serious play every day, in spaces full of light and openness, where their ideas aren't closed down, but they're opened up. So as adults, we need to be those companions in children's learning. We need to support children's creative potential and enculture those habits of mind that are absolutely lifelong and life-wide. So my provocation today is, you know, how best do we nurture children's imagination? How can we make that a lifelong habit? And we have some examples of, from School Without Walls, our project in Bath, where School Without Walls is doing school differently. It's opening up possibilities for the city as a campus for learning. Children are agents of their own learning. They're active citizens co-designing learning with adults that care alongside them. They're exploring their imagination, their, their curiosity and their questions, 
and we give them time and space and quality of attention to do that. Another example is the House of Imagination, launched a couple of years ago by Sir Ken Robinson at Vassboy University, a studio for children and young people to work alongside creative professionals to think about doing things differently together, working alongside mathematicians, artists, scientists, architects, to empower children to think about how they can express their imagination and express their ideas. So as Andrew said, the forest of imagination is an invitation for everyone to think about their imagination. The arts have the power to be transformative in our lives. Andrew is very modest. He is a creative genius, and he gave birth to the idea of Gardens by the Bay in Singapore, as he said earlier. But actually, what we're doing is creating pop-up contemporary arts and architecture spaces alongside a creative learning program that invites everybody to think about the power of nature in our lives. Andrew said, forest is the home of imagination. Imagination is everyone. So adults are also inspired by the power of children's imagination, a child's drawing turned into a massive rabbit in Queen Square, currently in Kingsmead. The spoken word poet Toby Thompson, who lives with us every year as part of Forest, he's a champion of young people's creativity. We want to create spaces that inspire and feed the creativity of our children. Forest of Imagination deliberately brings the inspirational experience and sensations of nature and wildness to our doorsteps. It puts creativity on the pavement. It's about the creative ecology of the city with collaboration across generations and between industries. So I have devoted my professional life, <laughs> and personal life possibly, to researching children's creativity and imagination. And I want everybody to take responsibility for nurturing children's imagination and creativity so that it becomes a lifelong habit. Children are enemies of boredom and we need to create exciting learning that is irresistible. But the future is uncertain. We live in a world that's changing rapidly and children's learning is becoming too packaged and delivered. The World Economic Forum has proposed recently that in 2020, the three key skills that children and young people need are creativity, critical thinking, and complex problem solving. So we need to attend to that. The idea of active imagination opens up the world for better ways of thinking and working together. It helps us to, le to learn to move like artists from open possibility to accomplishment and actualization. It offers a sense of shared beneficial responsibility and beauty that becomes powerful when it's nurtured within our communities, within Bath. So I'll end by inviting you to the Forest of Imagination outside to explore the answers to questions we haven't even asked yet. And I agree with David Armand that I think that children's imagination will save the world.